When I came to Toronto to shoot a documentary about the impact gun violence has on our communities, it was a different outlook from the typical, you know, America, America, every day. So uh, we connected with Ron. I started coming to the town hall meetings to study about the neighborhoods. I'm doing my research on uh, every neighborhood so I can represent the city right. While doing so, Ron, uh, one day, I, I think it was in uh, Rexdale, we had like a, it was pretty intense in there. And I, uh, I told one of the community members, hey, you know, in Houston, we have this thing I did called the no shoot zone. And this is what we did and it really helped our neighborhoods. And Ron was really interested in it. So we started talking about it some more. Every other time I come to town halls, I, I used to present. I told Ron, listen, I got some pictures, videos, everything you need for this. And you give a good uh, presentation and I want to do justice by presentation, by having my own little pictures and everything so people can visualize and see what really happened. Um, so I started in 2015. Um, I was shooting a film in Houston, Texas. I was living in Houston, Texas. And my executive producer called me and told me, hey man, there's something happening in Baltimore. Uh, stop what you're doing in Houston. I think this is really good. Uh, you have to get the footage. You have, your family's from there and it's easier for you than anybody else to go. I said, fine, I went there. We started shooting, but as soon as I got to my neighborhood, um, a guy called Maurice was murdered. His name was Lord Marty. He got murdered. Like, literally, I got there, he got killed. And I was like, wow, this is really bad. Welcome back. Um, and then his cousin called Tyree got uh, shot just like literally an hour later. And there was shootings everywhere. You know, I just, I was like, what is going on here? Um, we walking down the street, uh, like just how you said, put put the balloons up where homicide victims are at. Like every time we walked a few blocks down, there's another a, a memorial, another memorial, and we were like, "Whoa, this is getting real bad." And um, the National Guard was called out. I took all these pictures myself, so it, it looked like a whole war zone going on in Baltimore. Uh, a lot of people were walking down the street with their firearms out. There was a riot downtown, so uh, people were taking advantage of that by settling scores in the neighborhoods. And it was like a really dangerous place to be at. Curfew was nine o'clock and everything. So it, it, it was pretty a, a, a wild environment. And so we asked ourselves, this has been there for, like I, I took a picture next to this like in the early 2000s. And it's been there for so long and the same concept still applies. The houses are still boarded the same way. But how many more have to die before we make a change, you know? And we had to ask ourselves this deeply, especially when this was going on. We had a, the, one of the highest sum, murder rates in the, that summer. So um, we got together in the neighborhood on Lafayette and Mon Monroe, and we talked to different warring gangs. You know, it was a negotiation process all night long. And we, we said, listen, man, um, on this corner right here, a lot of the elders used to come out, have barbecues. A lot of the kids used to play the snow cone spot where people buy snow cones and throw snows at each other. And like they're not doing this anymore because they're really afraid. They're afraid. People who work their whole life are afraid to come out of their own houses. And can we just make this area right here just a safe zone where everybody can play in peace? And everybody actually, coincidentally, like, I mean, randomly just agreed to it. You know, like everybody was tired of the shootings, but everybody, people were just needing a negotiator. Nobody wanted to be the first guy to be soft. You know, the thing about in the streets, I don't want to be soft. I don't want to be soft. So I was like, look, I'll be soft and I'll teach you how to, I'm not, not teach you, but like, I'll show you how we can be real men and it's about taking care of the neighborhood. So we came up with this thing called No Shoot Zone. And that was a picture in no, uh, 2015. We just painted on the wall, No Shoot Zone. That's me and my bro. We came up with it um, together. And, um, oh, oops. Oh, okay. And then we had a few ro local rappers come out. We had the community come out, and Lil Marty was just murdered like a few feet from where we had this uh, celebration. And um, th that was that. I left, went back to Houston, came back again a year later. I see these kids right here, misbehaving, throwing rocks at cars from the gas station. There's a BP gas station, they're throwing rocks at cars because they have nothing to do, a lot of energy. And uh, actually I found out they all live in like a vacant home together. And you know, their parents are drug abusers and stuff. And um, I told him, listen, if you pump gas for a dollar, ask everybody coming over here, look, give me a dollar and I'll pump your gas for you. And whoever has the most money, come to the back alley, we're shooting a little movie over there, and whoever has the most money is gonna be in the movie. No, and it's, right, right, so they're all- Did you have to, were you afraid, to, did you have to wear a bulletproof? Nah, <laughs> I, that's like my neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like I was, I was yeah. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, I was comfortable with that. Um, so they finished, and it came back there. Of course, I put them all in the scene, 
But I asked them, hey, listen, do improv. So I want you to t say the first thing that comes out of your mind and just talk to each other. And they kept saying, hey, this is a no shoot zone over here. We don't shoot over here. This is a no shoot zone. And I was like, it shocked me, you know, because I was in Houston the whole time. I was like, whoa, this, no, these kids are l really living this life over here. And then I checked the murder rate, uh, the murder map, you know, uh, we, we have online murder maps and stuff. And I noticed nobody got shot or killed. And we, we used to have so many shootings going on in Lafayette and Murrow. So I was like, whoa, this thing really actually just worked. And the kids are, you know, drawing it on the floor. And we, of course, gave a, a lot of gifts. We give a lot of gifts out every uh, every year, every weekly. We, the weekly events kept happening, and we used, used to give the kids some gifts. And it just became a happy place, you know? Um, express their feelings right. on the wall. Right. And then the, 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 the you know, first responders, policemen, found out, they're like, what's going on in Lafayette and Monroe? They, everybody, the news came there. And um, it was all positive stuff, and people started, it became a mural, like, hey, we're taking pictures next to this, because this is like a miracle that happened on West Baltimore. And then people started begging us to come to their neighborhoods with, for no more sh no shoots on. So like, hey, like, I don't know what you guys did over there, but we need some over here to stop the violence over here. And then I thought to myself, I gotta bring this back to Houston, Texas. Okay, and uh, Houston, Texas, that same year, what was going on, I don't know what happened in 2015 where it was in the air, but the murder rate started skyrocketing up. Um, we had a lot of kids being caught in shootouts and uh, losing their life. Uh, my zip code is 77036, and we have the most homicides in Harris County. Count, uh, Harris County is the county Houston is in. Since 2012, we had about, I think, over 90 murders, uh, 94 or 95, in our zip code, which is like a postal code. So. I am very familiar with uh, having uh, friends being murdered, family members being murdered. Uh, I lost five friends in like one year, that same year, in Houston. Um, and I, you know, I told myself, like, you know, talking to the parents and everything, it's like, we have to stop this. And I had to put it up on my back that I need to make my community a better place so I can go back to how I was when we were growing up or back in the day. So I did the same thing I did in Baltimore, but this time, I, you know, I had my little camera on me, so. I took pictures of the meetings we had. This is the same type of meeting we had. This is a, in Garden City, where I come two straight nights. We're talking to the different gang members, like, hey, we have to stop shooting. See, like, there's a kid right there. Like, there's always kids on the block. So, we, you know, we talked, 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 and I, and I even used the fact that in Baltimore, it worked. So they feel like, okay, if Baltimore can do it, because Baltimore, St. Louis, Detroit, these are like the worst, you can't get any worse than that. Um, and everybody's like, if Baltimore can do it, we could do it too. So we had our first, uh, this is my neighborhood right now, this is 77036 zip code, and uh, we just, I, I print a banner out, because in Houston we don't have like, you, you can't do graffiti, <laughs> like it's pretty serious. So um, I printed a banner out, and um, the guy that helped print, actually the, the guy that printed the banner gave it to me half off, because he's like, I love the cause, and then we took a picture in front of it, had another meeting, just the same way we did, uh, had a lot, another block party, same way we did in Houston, in Baltimore, I went to is this Sunnyside, Houston, Texas, which is one of the top 20 violent neighborhoods in the whole America. And a, the kid right there put her hand on the banner and gave me an idea. So we had kids put their, their hands on, on paint to uh, put their imprint on the banner because this is for them, you know. This is Third Ward, Houston, Texas, CUNY Homes Housing Projects. is one of the hot projects in Houston, Texas. Third Ward uh, has uh, McGregor, uh, the, the main intersection from there is the second most violent neighborhood in, uh, in America. So we, we, we got that done, and we got Sunnyside Park, another park down the street in Sunnyside, Texas. No shoot zone, and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We, well, what I do is not, it's not only a block party anymore. We give awards to the kids, because all, all, we all know it, growing up and just being young men ourselves, is we all needed just a pat on the back to make, to change our life. I always recognize that. You know, and I know some kids might not be the most athletic kid in school, so he might not be on the ball team. It doesn't mean he doesn't want to play basketball, right? And then, um, so we have basketball competitions, gave awards out. I had these ladies come out from a salon and they did all the little girls' hairs for free in the whole project. I uh, had barbers come out, they cut all, all the kids' ha hairs, because I'm like, listen, y'all, Monday, when everybody's going to school, everybody's gonna look fly this time, you know? And, um, um, this kid right here got a scholarship that day, nice. you know, so I talked to a lot of organizations, a lot of radio stations and stuff like that. Hey, what, what's the best way we could, uh, I can use your company to make the neighborhood a better place? And 
we, we're all needed. It's a, a group effort, right? And the, as you can see, the parties kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You can't even see the banner anymore. And um, I don't know where uh, I made Fox News. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't know I was an activist until they labeled me an activist over there. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I'm an activist now. <laughs> like, um, and like, I actually didn't even believe I was going to be on the news. So I didn't tell anybody to record. This is from a fan online. They, they screenshot it and sent it to me. Because I didn't think I was actually going to be live on the, on the news. And, um, and now we, we, we actually were. Um, and then we had um, the last meeting right here. And this is the last No Shoes on Block party. It's in Garden City. Garden City is, uh, is, is a really uh, you know, troubled neighborhood. Uh, mm -hmm. the, they've had, like, I don't want to like, use a word to you know, put the neighborhood down, but it's really hot in that neighborhood, basically. And even the cops told us we cannot do a no shoot zone over there because you're inviting gangs that are opposing each other to come to one's place. And they didn't believe the guys from the north side of Houston, Texas, because I'm from the south side. So the north side, Garden City, will listen to this no shoot zone theory. But the guys are there hugging each other. I even invited the, the local uh, the PD who's a... Uh, uh, who cruises around the neighborhood, patrols the neighborhood, he came over there because I do believe in the one thing is we need to build a relationship with the police because um, if we, they, they are, for, for one, I can't do no shoots on all the time. I can't do these block parties all the time. They're there all the time. They need to get to know the officers. And the, the, the more we work together, the better. So I invited him there. He did do his speaking. And uh, as usual, we give the awards out. These are some of the kids that won awards. And I, I started like giving more awards. So I, I went to the schools. I, I asked the teachers, hey, who's doing good in math? Who's doing good in English? Who's, you know, and I asked the neighborhood too, like who's, which kid helps everybody out with their groceries? Which kid's picking up the trash, da, da, da. So I'm making these awards for the kids. Cause I know if I award this kid, another kid's gonna wanna do it so he can win it next year, you know? Um, and then um, this is my congressman right here uh, he, for my district, uh, Mr. Al Green. He invited me to breakfast because he wanted to find out like how I, I was able to do it. And uh, we spoke on how to reduce uh, gang, uh, gang and gun violence in Houston, Texas. My mayor invited me. I did win a few community awards for it. But the, the best award for me is 2017, the next year, the homicide dr dropped 11%. And a lot of the uh, domestic violence was down, a lot of the assaults were down, and we hit the key areas of the city, you know, and the neighborhoods that, that I feel like we all love. You know, all the gang members say they love their block. So if you love your block, you have to love the people on your block, you know. And uh, we pushed this 2016, 15, and it was, it was a, you know, this is a summary of what happened, but uh, it took a lot of effort, and this was the most rewarding thing to see in the news. And uh, I do this everywhere I go. I'm a, a filmmaker, but I also, e every time I have an opportunity to stop at a school that's not privileged, like where like this is a, 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 a startup a pre-K, and uh, they uh, teachers told me that they barely get role models, male role models, to come read for them, or you know. And I'm like, okay, listen, I'll come every single time. So you, you see me in my track suit, you see me in my, after work before work, whatever, like, I'm just there for the kids. Uh, I do it always in Africa, too. Like, I try to, you know, help uh, pay for kids' education, clothes, and um, a lot of those kids are orphans. So, you know, they, they have nobody to take care of them, and I feel like I have to step up if I have, I've been blessed, you know? Um, and this is a documentary. It's not really the title, but uh, this is a documentary I'm shooting in Toronto right now that's a follow-up for what I'm my efforts here in the city of Toronto, in the GTA. In Texas, did you get any of the gang members uh, that were involved too? That's yeah, I mean, you have to get the ones that are involved. Yeah, so they participated in yes. the community. And They're the ones that helped me do the no shoot zone stuff. See, this is right. amazing. This they, is they, amazing. The, 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 the active gang members <laughs> in the community gang were knocking door to door collecting yeah. money from me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Like they, they they did, and they were really happy about it. And uh, in the Garden City, they even paid for the stage, you know. And um, it was just a magical thing. And I, I just hope to continue this. It's a, it takes a lot of effort, though. But hey, very good. Nice. We're gonna get a chance to ask people some questions.